I started playing the harmonica back in 1963, listening to Woody Guthrie and then uh, Dylan used the harmonica as an assistant to their songs. I started to, uh, you know, get attracted to it and actually on any of the early records that I did make, I played harmonica on it. Once the song is done, when it's time to play it, I find the harp that goes with that song and I blow in and out and uh, a melody comes out and I use a couple little tricks I've learned with harmonica playing. I'm a single performer, I don't play with a band. So when I use my guitar style and uh, use that harmonica, it sounds like two or three people playing. It just helps melodically ascend my music. It just puts it into a whole other realm. Charlie McCoy in this town was the guy who really put it into my periphery that the harmonica was not just some little wingding instrument. This was a major thing and, and it could be played like a great saxophone or a great trumpet or even a great guitar. Charlie made it a, you know, just, he could do anything with the harmonica. And how he figured out how to do all that, I still don't know, but he, uh, I've seen a lot of harmonica plays and heard a lot, but he put it into a place that turned it into a classical instrument for me. He made it sound like it was bigger than life people like John Lee Hooker and the great uh, Delta Blues guys who did play harmonica, they were, they were just fantastic, fantastic. Well, my father was a classical pianist, so he was huge, listening to classical music in the house. I loved uh, the jazz guys. I loved Charlie Mingus and Thelonious Monk, Stan Getz and Archie Shep, all the great jazz players, and of course, Buddy Rich, just totally blew my blew my mind. As far as songwriters, and uh, I grew up listening to uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein, Lerner and Lowe, the Gershwin brothers, I mean, and Cole Porter, huge. I still write very melodic songs. I'm in the process of recording a, an album of really melodic love songs, but I took that, what I had in my youth, that melodic background, and transferred it over into country music. And uh, the great uh, lyricists that I met when I came here, from the early guys like uh, the Leuven Brothers and Bill Anderson, in those long recitations that he did, and uh, John Hartford early on in, 1964, Eddie Rabbit, I loved his lyrics, I loved Vince Matthews' lyrics. So I took that classical background that I had and just transferred it into stuff like Dreams of the Everyday Housewife, which is basically like a Strauss waltz. I did it in waltz time. Uh, Glenn did it in 6-8. First of all, I use all flatted harps because I tune my guitar a half step down. And uh, so all my minor uh, harps are flatted minor keys. I can make those minor, minor harps sound like a Parisian street singer playing a mournful French song with a great accordion player. With the technique that I use on the harp, it sounds just like an accordion, except I use vibrato, which you can't get on, a, on an accordion. I, play, I write a lot of songs in minor keys, and uh, I just know that I can make that harmonica sound so beautiful next to that guitar playing. I have a very unique guitar style and uh, I don't know anybody who plays the way I do and it just so happens that playing the harmonica uh, undergirds it and accompanies it so well that it's almost like somebody else standing, <laughs> standing there and playing for me. But I put those harps in a rack and I just go to town. So. I had met John in 1964 in, uh, the, at uh, Wally's Professional Club 
And when he was on the road and he was kind of burned out, and I used to talk to him shooting pool and passing the guitar around the room. We got to know each other there. But when I got in trouble for growing a lot of uh, illegal weed, uh, I was busted by the feds. Uh, John called me up and said, hey, Chris, uh, I heard what you're going through and why don't you come on out and stay at the house till the heat dies down a little bit. So I moved out to John's house on the lake and that's where I really got to, to know John. And he got to really listen to my songs and he ended up actually doing uh, one or two of them. And uh, we became bubs and that was it. And then right after that, I was on his show. So. Get out of those songwriters' rooms that, that everybody sits in to write these lower-level boogie hit songs that have hit the country airwaves in the last 10 years and go uh, get a good bottle of tequila or something like that and go to a motel Take your harps and your guitar, tell everybody goodbye, tell your wife you're leaving for a few days, and get everything wrapped up so you can go, and then get rid of the cell phone, and sit in there for about a week and write and play and think and stay there for a few days, and take those harps out and put them in that rack and start to get a feel for it, a feel for it so that all of a sudden it becomes one with the song. And you gotta get a little bit out of your head you got to find out who you are. you got to find yourself in that motel room with that bottle of booze and those harps and that guitar and put it all together and spend time. Make it work. Make it freaking work because everybody's going to come out of it with their own ideas about how to play this instrument, how to play that guitar, how to put it together to make it sound like one beautiful instrument, man. My name is Chris Gantry. I play marine band Honer Harps. I love them. They're the best going. I've played them all my life.